Hey, it's Brooks with Character Design Forge. In this video, I'm collecting four or five years of struggles and learning with this topic and condensing it into this video, so hopefully that amounts to something with folks. Maybe you've been making line artwork for a while and you're starting to grow tired of it. You'd like to spread your wings into a style of art that doesn't have its roots in comics, but instead in concept art and illustration. Maybe your first attempts have been less than stellar. So let's make better lineless art. In case you didn't see last week, since the algorithm isn't usually too kind to videos along the lines of updates, I've just launched an exciting new project called Biko's Backpack. It's a monthly delivery of brand new original art that takes the form of enamel pins like the Wanderlumen's Lantern, trading cards like Jacqueline here, stickers like Biko the man himself, and mini prints like this one of Parcel. This is all just what you'd get in January. So head over to patreon.com slash bageldenizen or get 15% off of a year of Biko's Backpack standalone over at brookseggleston.com for just the next few weeks. I'm really excited about this project and how it will enable more time to work on original projects and stories. One thing you'll realize if you've ever tried to create lineless art is that the lines were doing a lot of the work. That's because lineless art straddles this line between drawing and inking and painting. Here's a couple of points to help you make a better lineless outcome. For one, whenever a line exists between two separate shapes, or around a shape or color, it acts as a border, protecting the idea of the shape from outside visual intrusion. But once you remove those lines, the shapes have to defend themselves and stand on their own. This is a concept that painters are familiar and experienced with, but perhaps not as much to those that are used to lines. On the flip side, in order to achieve a lineless look, a painter coming from the other direction would probably have to understand they need to use limited shading and clear flat shapes in order to get this style. Take for example this image that I found, all credit to the artist. I'm just kidding, it's by at underscore Sanji7. It's called reverse image search and it takes five seconds. In order to make this image happen, every color choice in the piece matters, which takes more planning from the beginning than if it had lines. Along those lines, if you're planning to make a series or a full story or world filled with lineless art this way, that also means that every color choice will matter. Oftentimes what tends to happen is the artists will establish certain color tones or ranges for characters and backgrounds. For example, all backgrounds will be mute, dark tones, and all characters will be vibrant, bright colors. It may seem overwhelming at first to plan out every color from the beginning, but a step that who did this most likely took or could have took while making this is to create the piece in grayscale first, establishing a contrast in value, or the darkness or lightness of the color, before choosing specific hues. Some rather basic things to keep in mind, two lineless colors that are similar in hue are going to kind of bleed together visually. For example, if your character's face is orange and their eyes are yellow, with no point of separation between them, these shapes are going to bleed together in readability. If two colors are similar in value, try making them disparate hues or vice versa. Number two, another quick piece of advice that goes into the planning or approach of this work is that you're thinking about shapes and not lines. So it's crucial that you understand the forms that your character or subject is made up of, their construction, their makeup. This might mean tightening things up at the sketch level or defining things that might be ambiguous scribbles in your sketch. So now for number three, I sort of have to start telling you about the way that I've solved this process for myself. In the past, my line artwork has kind of been a strength, and that's the background that I've come from, not a painting one. So one of the biggest problems that comes up in a lineless piece is overlap between two shapes that are the same color. You can do all sorts of segmenting to reduce the amount that this happens, but eventually two of your character's skin tone areas will overlap, for instance. Now the way that I've solved this is actually through lines, in more ways than one. Now at first I was trying to be a sort of purist that avoided the use of lines in every way, but actually using them in a small capacity is barely noticeable and covers a multitude of sins. It does amount to a little bit of extra work, but my current process starts with a line art render of the character. 
Because I'm aiming for things to have clean edges, this helps establish that outer boundary that I'll use later on in the render, but most of the lines won't actually be visible. Next, I'll figure out what colors to use if I haven't established a palette already. I might hide the line art layer here in order to see what it would look like without the all-powerful barrier between ideas that lines make. Next, I'll lock the opacity of the line layer and color each line so that it matches the interior fill color that it contains. This might cause certain areas to look like they're bleeding together, but I'm not too worried. This version of the lines that I'm coloring might be a duplicate layer, with the old black ones saved as a backup in the document. After this, you might want to duplicate this version of the lines again, and now crank the brightness of the layer down and the saturation up, in essence creating a colored line art version of the art. Otherwise, you might want to go into the flat version here and just selectively draw over portions of the line with a darker color. You could also, independently of any line art layer, go over top with tiny lines. Remember, there's no need for lines on any outer edge of your work. Those can all go away. There's also no real lines needed when two shapes of different colors touch. So really, the only place that you might want lines is where two shapes of the same or similar color overlap each other, or there's an area where a little extra detail is needed, including things like contour lines. That's technically two planes of the same color overlapping each other. At this point, I've achieved what I wanted to technically, but I might want to take a few steps to render what I've made. So for example, a little bit of shading can assist in separating shapes. A little bit of grain or texture can add a nice feel to the piece, and some light rendering can help bring focus to a certain part of your piece and contrast where you need it. Now for me, this is the style or look that I've been looking for, so I'm really happy with it. Keep in mind though that any kind of rendering, but especially this kind, can be time consuming. If you need to knock a large volume of work out, this might not be ideal. Also, don't fall into the trap of needing to render every sketch that you make. Especially when you're learning, drawing quantity will be more helpful for you than the extra few hours of work that it takes to polish everything. Hopefully this helps you. Let me know if you have any questions. If you'd like to keep my forge burning, you can do so over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. And as I mentioned earlier, things have been completely restructured. Talked about it last week, but there's a ton in there, and it's very clear at each stage you're getting one more thing, plus all the stuff before it. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at Bagel Denizen, and keep subscribed here, I guess, for new videos every week. Thanks so much for watching, and have fun creating.